Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Just enjoying a nice little cigar here. Beautiful Singapore. I'm on my way to Dubai. As you guys know, I spent the last eight months building, suffering with endless dedication, building the relaunch and the reopening of Capital Club. Wanted to say hi to you guys, see how you guys are doing. I wanted to uh, do a quick little AMA. What do you guys think? Quick little AMA for the fam. Vibe, spend some time together. I just got done an exclusive series with an e-commerce savant with over $200 million a year in sales through, through Shopify here in Singapore, which just showed me you know, like, there's levels to the game. This guy was literally... I, I, the first question I asked him, said, you know, there's many there's many of these young cats talking on <laughs> on TikTok saying dropshipping is dead, e-commerce is dead. What do you think, brother? You, like, you're the expert here. You're, you're doing $200 million a fucking year, brother. You're, you're making almost a million dollars a day in sales with about 20, 25% margins. Tell me, in your opinion, is e-commerce dead? And he said... He smiled. You guys will see it when you guys join Capital Club. He smiled. He chuckled. He looked at me. He said, it's just getting started. (laughs) This man tempted me to get back into the e-commerce game, but I'm dedicated to you guys. I'm dedicated to to Capital Club. It's uh, my passion. It's my, my privilege to be able to unite the glitches in the matrix. And yeah, I'm really, really pumped to show you guys what is happening anyways let's uh do some amas i see a lot of people wanting to join do a little hand raise or if you have a good question i'll add you to the chat and we'll get started hope you guys are doing well just enjoying an evening cigar you know i just got done a phenomenal series inside uh capital club here in singapore i've been traveling through asia but my asia tour ladies and gentlemen is coming to an end. I am on my way to beautiful Dubai tomorrow. I'm going to be spending 10 days in Dubai. Maybe we get together with the glitches out there. It's going to be a good time. I'm there meeting with some eight and nine figure entrepreneurs to sit down and talk Capital Club, talk business. You guys will have access to our conversations inside the platform when it opens up this summer. But I wanted to give you know, a little bit of time for conversation. So we got 2,300 people there tuned in. Who should we let in? Guys, what do you guys want to talk about? Should we talk about business? Should we talk about why the school system is shit? What should we talk about? Biohacking? Is it is it a little bit hypocritical for me to be smoking a cigar and be talking about biohacking? I don't think so. I don't think so because... Every now and then, you can enjoy a little cigar. It's not a daily thing. I, uh, I'm i here. I would show you guys my surroundings, but that would give away my location. Last time I gave away my location, some of you motherfuckers pulled up to my hotel. So we're definitely not going to do that shit. <laughs> but we have some people that want to talk about business. Uh, so let's talk about some general business principles that I think uh, are extremely important. Should I give you guys one of the principles that I learned from... Uh, this $200 million a year e-commerce expert that is, uh, well, he's teaching some beautiful lessons inside Capital Club when it opens this summer. But he gave me some incredible data sets. And, you know, what I first learned is that the moment that you think you know everything, and it's usually the poor people, hear me out. It's usually the poor people that think that they know something. It's usually the poor people that have these blinders on in this limitation. When I sit down with successful people, when I sit down with wealthy people, yeah, there's some pricks out there. There's some people out there that are not really nice. But for the most part, most of these guys that I sit down and talk to, their parents were taxi drivers. Their, 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 their moms were teachers at school. Their moms were either stay-at-home moms, housewives, or their fathers work in factories. So I sit down and I see these guys go from zero to hero and, and they're extremely humble. So my, my mind is just extremely boggled on a regular basis when the noobs, right, the bots, the, 
the doubters and the naysayers. And I understand, you know, you live in an ecosystem with so much shit, so much bullshit, so many lies that it's so hard to understand what is true. But you must test things before you judge them to see if they are good. Just like you wouldn't judge a book by its cover, you would read it. You must not judge a dish by its appearance before you taste it. And it's the same thing with information. It's the same thing with knowledge. It's the same thing with wisdom. It's the same thing with information that you receive. You must be able to test it to prove the thesis and then implement the thesis. You must implement in business, right? Oh, the lights just turned off here. It's, it's late. It's midnight. It's midnight here in Singapore. So as you guys know, if it's midnight here in Singapore and I'm hopping on these calls, I got up at about 7 a.m., but my passion keeps me awake. But anyways, I want to talk a little bit about business. As I sat down with this $200 million a year entrepreneur, you guys will be able to listen to the conversation yourselves inside Capital Club. He said, if you want to succeed in business, you need to establish this very basic criteria. What is this criteria? Should, I'm going to move to, I think there's a little bit of light somewhere else, but I'm going to keep it in the dark because I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. He said, here's the formula. Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. Let me know if uh, you're writing this down. Once you're ready, I'll let you guys know. So as I spoke to this $200 million a year entrepreneur, he mentioned the concept of succeeding in business. There we go. Matrix, matrix, matrix attack has been, been uh, cease and desist. We are back in business. He mentioned three aspects of building a successful business. One, number one, very simple. You need to plan, plan plan, plan. How many times in your business before either you test a product in e-commerce, before you test an idea, how much time do you spend planning? How much time do you spend, you know, developing your war plan? How much time do you spend planning by understanding the marketplace and by understanding the ecosystem that you're in? Most of you guys are very impulsive, right? You're not proactive, you're reactive in the business place. But if you want to succeed in business, if you want to succeed in business, you need to understand that reactiveness is an impulse. You cannot conduct business off of impulse because impulse means that you're conducting business off of chance. You cannot leave business up to chance. You need to leave it up to probabilities and probabilities can be controlled based off of your positioning. That's number one. Number two, you need to test. Test is number two, but inside testing, it also implies execution. So once you have your plan, you need to execute on a timely fashion based off of what? Based off of the thesis that you've put together or your business plan. Most of you guys have not developed a business plan, let alone you spend time executing on that plan. You spend time scrolling on the internet, you spend time gaining information, but unless you do, right, you're not gonna be able to achieve success. There are those that think, and then there's those that act. If you want to make money, you need to act, right? You need to do something with the information and the knowledge that you have. So once you plan, then you execute. And finally, this is the most important thing. Cigar went out. I'll light it up afterwards once we're done. And finally, you have to iterate. You have to iterate. You need to be able to understand that iteration is the key to mastery and the key to perfecting your craft. Test is important, but iteration is what causes perfection. Iteration is what causes perfection. You must be able to consistently and effectively reiterate the plan that has been executed so that you can refine your craft. That is the difference between a professional and an amateur. A professional learns from his mistakes. A professional learns from his errors. A professional learns from the market that he's involved in and he iterates and he adapts to what? Build a stronghold in the marketplace so that he can have what? One word, ladies and gentlemen, one very important word. Master predictability. Master predictability. 
you do not want to build a business that is volatile. You can't build a business off of volatility. It's not sustainable. That's why a lot of you guys that do direct to consumer brands, that you do e-commerce, you do affiliate marketing, you do Amazon FBA, you don't have predictable models, so you cannot, you know, really predict your cash flow. It's 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 not easy to do. It's, I'm not saying that it's easy, but the formula exists, right? And over the last couple of weeks, as I sit with these fucking giants in the business space, people that have done seven hundred million dollars in sales, five billion dollars of assets under management, dudes that are out here trading against banks, really making fucking moves, I've been extremely humbled, you know, because I've done well in crypto, I've done well in e-commerce. But I haven't been in a situation whereby I have it, it makes me want to get back in the game. I'll be honest with you guys. Like when I sit down with these ballers, I I'm humbled by the fact that there's levels to the levels. You know, the the moment you make ten million dollars, you're like, okay, I'm set. Perfect. That's cool. Yes, I understand. You know, I had some people make fun of me when I talked about this idea of making five million dollars in a day. Like, oh, well, that's, that's, and I said, that's chump change. And they're like, well, it's, how is it chump change? I'm not saying I make $5 million every single day. Like, don't get me wrong. That's, that's not a viable uh, way of processing information. But instead of, you know, acting almighty and all strong, I come to realize, like, dude, like, there's levels to the levels. There's levels to business. There's levels to, to the game. And once these guys were showing me their numbers, they were showing me their P&Ls, they were showing me some of their systems, they were showing me how they build teams with up to 2,000, 3,000 members and, you know, uh, employees. I'm like, fuck, bro, like, maybe this idea, this this whole idea that I built up in my mind of retiring at the age, uh, in, my, in my mid-20s, maybe it's bullshit, bro. Maybe I got to get back into the game. <laughs> So, you know, I enjoyed my last couple of years of vacation. I was able to cash out a nice, a, a nice, uh, quite of my money, a nice bit of my money throughout it through investments and stuff like that. And I was able to enjoy the beach. But when I sit down and I look at these guys that are just like grinding and hustling and, and building, I'm like, dude, I want to, I want to build again. And, you know, I enjoy content. I enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy us sitting together and, and having a conversation I met most of you guys watching me now you see 2,000 six uh 600 people and you don't realize that in fact I was doing these live streams with 10 people <laughs> many years ago so you may think that Luke is new around the block but in fact you are you're actually new around the block I was I've been doing this for a while hence why I've been able to cement my name inside the the business world inside the business space and I have uh, been able to build phenomenal relationships. You know, I'm on my way to Dubai tomorrow. I'm meeting with uh, eight and nine figure entrepreneurs that have been able to succeed. Many of them come from nothing. And we're sitting down uh, for an exclusive series inside Capital Club that you guys will have access to this summer. And I come back as a person that's here to learn. In no way, shape, or form am I going to pretend that I know everything. You know, the moment that you think that you know everything is the moment that that you stop growing and you stop learning. And I think that being part of a network and being part of a group of people that sober you up to reality and give you a real paradigm of what is possible in life is a really good thing. So you need to evaluate the people that you surround yourself with. You need to evaluate the people that you listen to. And you need to be able to really be humble. It is often those people that are not humble that, you know, aren't able to achieve many things in life. And I'm not talking about cocky arrogance. You know, you, you look at somebody that's extremely successful and they've earned their belt per se to trash talk or to, or to say certain things. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the individuals that think they know everything, but their bank account reflects that they know nothing. Uh, so if you want to succeed in business, you need to be able to plan. Business plan. If you don't know what a business plan is, go spend some time on YouTube. Like, how do I develop a business plan? How do I develop a viable business model? 
and understand how to study the market, understand how to study your niche, understand how to create an ideal customer avatar that you can serve. Two, you need to execute. You need to execute on the plans that you are theorizing. And finally, you need to iterate. You know, a lot of you guys are doing the exact same thing that you were doing last year. You need to understand that the market evolves, the market changes, the market is extremely different than it used to be last year, than it used to be the year before. And unless you're able to iterate, right? It's not this idea of evolution of, you know, turning from monkeys to humans, but it's this idea of micro evolution of the world is shifting. And unless you evolve with the world, you're gonna be left behind. That is what I've kind of learned over the last couple of years. So let's do a couple of lives here add a couple people I don't really know who to add uh, I don't know any any of these profile photos but if you want me to add you to one of these live streams you have to be you have to have a real profile photo if you don't have a real profile photo I can't add you uh, do a do a number one ladies and gentlemen do a number one in the chat if you want me to add some people here to the to the AMA we'll do a quick AMA three questions and let's see uh, what people what people say. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do a number one or a little fire emoji, guys. If you guys are interested. We've got 2,500 people in chat. You guys know I don't really hop on live often. So you need to be able to abstain from the dopamine desire to go back on your phone and go back to bullshitting and go back to nonsense there's so many distractions out there you need to understand the value right the value of listening to information because what i've learned guys listen listen i'm going to tell you guys something may i what i've learned is that most of the sabotage in your life is self-induced hear me out okay most of the sabotage that is self-induced in life is because you do not have the self-regulation to do that which you know you need to do. So you need to be able to ask yourself, right? You know you need to go to the gym. You know you need to start this business. You know you need to read this book, but you don't do it. Why? Why don't you do it? Not, oh, I didn't do it today. No, no. Why didn't you do it? Why did you cave to the nonsensical bullshit in the perspective that you're above the grind, you're above the work, you're above the consistency? Because these are the things that are holding you back. We understand that consistency compounds. I've said this once and I'll say it again. But why is it that you know what to do but you don't do it? Don't just say, oh, because I'm lazy. That, no, no, that's not good enough. Wait, no, it's not that you're lazy. Something else is wrong. You need to be able to identify these things. And once you identify these things, you're able to tackle them effectively. Oh, I'm spitting some game here. <laughs> I'm, I'm hyped, guys. I'm hyped to talk to you guys. It's been a, it's been a little bit of time. I, uh, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy just sitting down and, and conversing with you guys. I'm, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy to be... Uh, chopping it up with you guys on a regular basis i appreciate you guys you know taking the time of the day to uh to be here i know you could be doing anything you could be scrolling on tiktok and doing some other bullshit but you are an anomaly you are a glitch you're a person that's interested in leveling up so should we let some people in all right profile photos or uh videos need to be on let's uh bring three people on here are the rules. Before I bring you on, you need to state your name, what you do, uh, how much you're currently making, right? And what your question is. So no bullshit, no nonsense, no pitching, none of that bullshit. Let's provide value to each other, right? You can't be thinking about what you can receive, think about what you can give. So build a question that is, you know, constructive for everybody else in the community to listen to and to uh, learn and we can kind of address those things. So let's get started here. Let me select one of you guys. Uh, who should I pick? Let's get this one guy in here by the name of Bartek.
here we go. Did it add? Hello? Hey, how's it going, brother? How's it going, brother? I can't believe I'm on the phone to you, man. Uh, so... Hey. hey, hang on, hang on. Stop, stop moving, stop moving, stop moving. Yeah. All right. All right, chill out, chill out. You're good, bro. Uh, talk to me. What do you do? What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, my name is Bartek Standa. I'm, uh, I'm currently working as a, as a salesman in a, in a company called Universal Media. I literally just started seven days ago because I've seen you and a few other influencers like Andrew Clay and stuff like that telling me that it's better to start a sales shop. And I actually got reached four figures today in sales over the phone. I sell marketing and advertising. I was 17 Lovely. years old. I, I got a seven seven days ago. I went up to uh, I went up to the to the office and he seen that I looked uh, I looked muscular and I got the job. I didn't believe I could get the job. I applied everywhere, got the job, and uh, yeah, I started seven days ago, man. Congratulations, brother. You're 17 years old. Yeah, I'm 17 years old. Correct. What's the What's the building behind you? Sorry. What's the building behind you? Uh, it's a church. Lovely. Are you in Ireland right now? Can you hear me? Hello? Are you in Ireland right now? Yeah, in Dublin. Dublin, Ireland, yeah. Lovely. So you're 17 years old. You're doing a sales job. What's your question, brother? My question, uh, my question I would ask you would be, with AI that's, that's coming in the next five to ten years, um, what would you say would be the most reliable business, business model to start looking into to prepare yourself uh, for the future to come? So the first thing that I would say, you know, I was listening to, to Gary Vaynerchuk. He was talking the other day in a, I think he was in, in con yeah. uh, at, a, at a conference and he was talking about, you know, everybody's out here talking about AI. Yeah. Uh, everybody's out here talking about artificial intelligence. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you back on live so that you can listen now that I have the question. Uh, okay. Because you have your, because he has, he had his ear, guys. He had his ear. He didn't come prepared. He didn't have his headphones. He didn't have his headphones. He was giving he was giving me a bad aesthetic. <laughs> Anyways, I was I was listening to an interview by Gary Vaynerchuk, and he was he just came it just got published recently, and he was talking about this very simple idea of you know everybody's out here talking about AI, but most of you motherfuckers don't even know what AI is about. Right? You don't know, understand artificial intelligence. You don't understand what it means. So many times people worry about the wrong thing, and they worry about the wrong thing because they're thinking about the future. It's perfect to think about the future, but if you're poor, right, you can't be really focused about the future. You need to be focused on the present moment. What can you do right now to make money? So I think uh, this gentleman is doing an extremely good job at doing what? At positioning himself by doing sales. So at the age of 17, he said, all right, I would have made my first four figures seven days in, which means probably medium ticket, high ticket. He made a thousand bucks, right? If he was wor working at a waiting job, if he was working in a restaurant, if he was working in a hotel, this would take him a week, if not two weeks, to be able to make money in this position. He also said, I'm well built. I went to the gym. Uh, I look good. So he has an extra advantage over somebody that looks sloppy, somebody that isn't well conditioned. Why? Because he has an attractive physique. Uh, it's good for business. Uh, he uh, commends some sort of respect. And he shows what? Discipline and consistency. I would say before you even worry about artificial intelligence, you need to have six figures in the bank, right? Have a hundred grand, have a hundred grand. Sales is a phenomenal way to do it. Whether you're doing affiliate marketing, whether you're doing sales over the phone, whatever it may be, you need to understand that you need to learn what I like to call forever skills or inflation proof skills. These are skills that will translate forever in perpetuity, regardless of the time and age. If AI exists, there will still be the need to sell in person. If AI is still around, there will still be the need for human interaction. Uh, when the moment comes around where robots exist and things like that, that'll be a different story. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to learn foundational skills like networking, sales, marketing, communication. These are pivotal for your success. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? You need to learn forever skills. These skills are what I like to call inflation-proof skills. Inflation-proof skills 
are skills that allow you to not worry. Listen to me, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. If you're taking notes, if you are perfect, if you're not, totally fine, that's totally cool. But understand this very basic principle. Your confidence cannot be based on money. The money that you have is not your metric of confidence. So when you see the money in your bank account, you can't feel confident with that money in the bank account because it's conjured up out of thin air, right? It's fake. Yes, you can use it to spend things. You can use it to buy things. Yes, you can use it to barter, whatever it may be. But what you can actually count on in perpetuity is yourself, the skills that you've developed. That's what you need to be able to rely on and count on, your skills. You hear me? So the question is, what skills do you have today that make you trust yourself? And if you have none, you need to start asking yourself, what type of skills can I develop so that I can begin to trust myself more and begin to walk with confidence? I'll give you an example. And, and, and I'm not a fighter. You know, I, I spar. I do a little bit of boxing here and there. I'm not by no means no professional. But if I'm walking down an alley and, uh, and I have a professional understanding of, uh, of some sort of martial art or combat sport and I see a random guy there, if I have no experience, right, I may be alerted. I may be afraid. But if I'm a, an expert, if I am quite experienced and I have confidence in my skill, I can walk down that dark alley with confidence that, you know, I can stand my ground. I may not win, I may lose, the other guy may have a gun or have, may have an advantage, but I can walk with more confidence. If I didn't have a skill, I would walk with a little bit more caution. It's the same thing with the skills in business. It's the same things with the skills in, the, in, in your, your average life. Develop skills that give you confidence to move around the marketplace with effectiveness. Does that make sense? Alrighty, let's uh, add another person here. You need to have a profile photo. First thing you do, mention your name, what you do, how much money you make, and your question. Unless you have a real name, I'm not gonna add you. It's important that you guys, I understand, have an anonymous profile on Instagram, that's fine. Have another profile that you use for networking and you use for uh, interacting with people on the internet. Let's add a guy here by the name of... Huh, let's add, I'm going through the names. Let's add this guy called Danny. All right, we just added a guy called Danny. Let's see here if he joins. Hello. Danny, how's it going, brother? It's going good, man. How are you? Well, where are you from? I live in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And... Uh, Mexico? Yeah. Nice, very nice, brother. What do you um, do? So I'm, <laughs> it's crazy. So I'm an associate producer of a top ten business podcast called Bigger Pockets. Lovely. And damn, I'm just trying to think. What do you find is the best way to leverage the people that you know? So, so it. it, it are you familiar with how Bitcoin works? You're on mute. I think you're muted. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you familiar with how Bitcoin works? I'm not as familiar as, with Bitcoin as I am like real estate investing because that's what the podcast is about. Okay, perfect. So, so I'm going to give you the premise to answer your question, but I'm going to use Bitcoin as the example. So uh, our, nodes right? When you, you're Bitcoin mining, you, you're, it's all about nodes. The more nodes make the network more secure and more safe and more stable. If you want to build a valuable connection, you need to, first of all, understand how can you serve them? So the people around you right now, you're an executive producer for a podcast. How are you serving these people? Number one. Number two is the people that come and interact on this podcast Yes, those, the hosts are building relationships with, relationships with these individuals, but what are you doing to be in contact with these individuals? When this person walks in, right, who offers them the water? The, the water? Who offers them the bottle of water? Who offers them the first handshake? Who offers them the, hey, can I take care of you? Or here's a lint roller so that your shirt is actually pristine. Or who brings the steamer into the place? Is it the, is it the, the makeup artist? Or is it the guy that's perspicacious enough to perceive things ahead of time to make an impact? Yeah. 
So what you need to do is you need to go above and beyond by doing small things. Most people remember what? Gestures, kind gestures. If you want to succeed in business, you need to be able to provide kind gestures to people. Not because you want something in return, but you are perceived as a person that solves problems. Whether they're big, whether they're small, it doesn't really make a difference. What I've learned in business, bro, is that people that are highly successful, you know, I got a lot of DMs on a regular basis. They're like, hey, Luke, let me come work for you for free. I don't need people to work for me for free. I, I Thankfully, I have some money. I want the best mm -hmm. people to come work for me. I want people to solve my problems. I don't want to tell people my problems. So how do you expand on the network that you currently have? Be able to first be seen. So how are you seen? You're seen by providing value. No, you don't have to fucking open your mouth. You don't have to talk. Hey, my name's Daniel. Here's your water. Anything you need, brother, make yourself at home. Yeah. Serving people, going above and beyond. On the way out, hey, anything you need, here's my Instagram. Please let me know. Ask your boss if you're allowed to do that. If he says yes, and you hope, most likely he will, that's the end of the game. That's the end of the story. Done. Hey, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was great listening to you. Uh, see you around. Boom. Yeah. That's it. Have interaction. That's it. Have interaction. Be seen. There is a law in the 48 laws of power that states that which cannot be seen counts for nothing. So it does. The fact that you're in the room is what matters. Do you understand? Yeah. What matters isn't that you're, you have a job is that you have access. Access is what matters. Access is what matters. So now you have access. Perfect. You're getting paid for the access. How are you doubling down and gaining double the value? Perfect. You may not be getting paid a ton of money, maybe getting paid a little bit of money here and there, whatever the gig may be. Yeah. So how do you ensure that you're gaining as much value in return for the time invested? You gain value by giving value and the yeah. value may be small. And this isn't just for you. This is for anybody listening. Dude, I'll give you an example. Many, many years ago, I, used, I was waiting tables and one of the people that I waited tables for was Jeff Bezos. Right. And yeah, perfect. Of course, the dude doesn't remember any, anything, but I was attentive to make sure that the small things that this man needed, I could cater to. I had uh, entrepreneurs that came in on a regular basis and I would make sure that they would remember me, whether it was by finding a familiarity, by cracking a joke, by making sure I overserved them. So much so that I eventually got to the place where some of them invited me out to do like small little meetups, things of this nature. Why? Because I made myself seen. Many times when you're dealing with high entrepreneurs, you, you, a lot of people that haven't achieved massive levels of success yet, they put themselves in the back room. They're like, oh, well, I can't, I can't do anything. I, 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 you know, I'm not a valuable person. But what if this guy is just thirsty? <laughs> what, if, what, what if this guy just, you know, maybe he's a little bit nervous and you're like, hey, bro, at the end of the podcast, hey, bro, you did a great job. You're cut out for this shit. Well done. Yeah. Hey, by the way, this is my name. Anything you need, make sure you reach out to me. Boom, here's my card or here's my Instagram, whatever it may be. That which cannot be seen counts for nothing. So when people, you know, think they see the Rolex or they see the money or they see the influence, they think that that's what other people want. Brother, we're all human. For all you know, this guy's in fucking Mexico. He's thirsty, bro. Give this, come in with fucking fresh coconuts. Hey, bro, they got water here, but hey, I got some, you know what alkalinization is? No, what is it? Oh, perfect. Let me talk to you about electrolytes real quick. Boom. Here's some coconut water. Oh, and somebody listening to this may be like, that's stupid. That's bullshit. That's brother. I'm on podcasts every time. Nobody's ever offered me a coconut. You know, if somebody offered me a coconut, I'm like, bro, whoever this, this guy's legit. Next time I'll remember this person. I'll say, Hey, what's up? How's it going, brother? Good to see you. And that's how you build what relationships. The world is about relationships. And in relationships, you don't get married on the first date unless it's 1940. You're about to go to world war two, but that's no longer the case right? It's about relationships. So your goal is how do you build, how do you build upon these networks that you're getting access to is by being a valuable node. What is a valuable node? Is a person that understands how to connect the dots. First, you need to be able to perceive the, the pain point, anticipate the pain point and provide value and be seen because that which cannot be seen counts for nothing. How does that sound G? That's awesome. I really appreciate it, man. Good, brother. I'm going to definitely thank you so much for uh, hopping on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Good luck, G. All right. Bye. All righty. Let's do one more.
Let's do uh, so so th this is what I want to share with you guys. You know, like business is cool. Like entrepreneurship is cool. It's a journey. It's a it's a it's a it's it's an it's 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 an experience. But you iterate upon these things. So when people talk about money, they talk about success. You know, I've had the privilege in my life to sit down with a couple billionaires. There's like eight of them. And none of them look at the watch that I have on my wrist. <laughs> none of them, brother, I had, a, I had a guy that came in the other day. I think he was worth like, he done like, he done like $700 million in sales, $800 million in sales, $800 million in sales. You guys will see the interview inside Capital Club. Yeah, he did $800 million in sales. And he comes in wearing these old ass white Adidas shoes, sweaty ass shirt. And if you walked across the street from this dude, you wouldn't think this guy's worth two fucking dollars. But this guy's doing fucking hundred million dollars a year in sales. He's done over eight hundred million dollars a year in his lifetime. And what you need to realize is that people that are wealthy, people that are successful, them showing off their wealth many times, not everybody, right? This is not a generalization, but many times I've perceived it, especially when people come from not a lot of money. Uh, unless they have some sort of arrogance or pride attached to to their possessions they they're kind of ashamed they're kind of embarrassed you know at some point you know you make money and you don't really want to flash it off if you're a young cat if you're if you're a new money you know you show off your money a little bit more i understand that right you come from nothing you want to show it off you have some ego attached to it. that's totally fine no, i'm not hating on it it's not a big deal but those people that are uh, on a different class of money, like they're, they, they're shy. They don't show their money off that way. And you showing them a super nice watch or things of this nature doesn't impress them. You know, so when I sit down with these guys, they care to speak more to my brother, Nate, who teaches them about biohacking than they care to sit down and talk to me. These motherfuckers want to know, how can I get a six pack? What type of water should I be drinking? How can I increase my life by 10 years? You know, how do I not feel so tired and exhausted? So when you guys think what is a value proposition for wealthy people or for people that are successful, you can't think that the value proposition is the same thing that you want. That's why you need to study people the same way that you study markets. Does that make sense? Let's do, uh, let's do another question here. And, and you know what? Every two weeks, I'm going to be hopping on Capital Club and we're going to have an exclusive live stream, have an exclusive members area, and we're just going to chop it up. We're just going to chop it up, have a great time, and we're going to have this one-on-one -on -one relationship on a regular basis. I wasn't expecting to do this live stream, by the way, guys. But anytime I speak to you, I feel empowered. Anytime I speak to you, I it holds me accountable to get to the next level. It's 1230 here at night in beautiful Singapore. I remember the first time I came to Singapore many, many years ago. I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I was a, a person that was attempting to find success. I, I slept in hostels and uh, was backpacking in essence. And I have come a long way. You know, I just happened to be able to wear nicer clothes, eat at whatever restaurants that I want, interact with nicer people. And, and, but it's a process. Success is a process. But the journey, my friend, you need, you need to enjoy the journey journey of becoming successful, the journey of becoming that which you want to become is so much better than the prize, right? The process is the prize, the process of becoming successful, the process of becoming the best version of yourself, the process of, of becoming that which you imagined you could become is the prize. Once you get there, you're not so amused at the, at the, at the peak. You're more impressed at the fact that you climbed the mountain. You know what I mean? The fact that you climbed the mountain is the success. Looking at the view from the top is cool, but you're like, just damn, I climbed this mountain. I'm pretty, I'm pretty successful. Like this was a great achievement. But then you look up and you're like, oh shit, well, there's another mountain that I need to climb. And that's the journey of life. So don't compare yourself to the mountains and the pinnacles of other people. You're on your own journey. You're on your own process. As long as you don't cheat yourself, right? As long as you are honest with yourself and you don't cheat yourself from success, you don't cheat yourself from your potential. You don't cheat yourself from achieving great things. Well, then you can live a life in a state that I like to call a state of equanimity. Equanimity, okay? Look up what equanimity is. Equanimity is a beautiful word. It's one of these words that I have 
utilize to describe one of the ideal states of being in my life. And equanimity means calmness of the soul. How many of you guys can say you experience equanimity, a life of equanimity? Are you always comparing yourself to other people? Are you always nervous? Are you always anxious? Are you always focused on tomorrow? Are you always depressed about the past? Equanimity is such a beautiful way to live. That doesn't mean you settle for less. That doesn't mean that if you have a shitty life or uh, you're not making any money, yet, you're just like, oh, well, I'm just going to lie myself into believing that this is all I can have. If you only have one life to live and you're only guaranteed today, enjoy the process of becoming better today. A good hour, right, consistently leads to what? A good day. A good day consistently leads up to what? A good week. A good week consistently leads up to what? A good month. A good month consistently leads up to what? A good year. And a good year consistently adds up to what? A good life. So if you want to live a good life, you need to start today because your life is experienced in the present moment. So understand how to enjoy the present moment, my friend. Understand how to be here right now. Go do some push-ups. Go hang out with your friends and your family. Go read a book. Go level up. Go set some plans and goals. Be ambitious. Don't settle for less. Settle for greatness. Why would you settle for average when you were created to be extraordinary? I often tell my people, you know, you guys are my people. I often tell my people, why would you settle for ordinary when you were created to be extraordinary? Don't settle for less, but at the same time, don't compare yourself to what other people are, who other people have become. Because for all you know, you may not want to trade your life for theirs. You understand? Equanimity. All right, let's do a couple more questions. I love hanging out with you guys. It's a great time. Let's get uh, Edward up in here. Check, check, check. One, two. Let's get five, four, three, two, one. Bad internet. Sorry, Brother Edward. Get some good internet connection. We tried to add somebody up in here, but it didn't work. Let's uh, get somebody else up in here. Let's get Wayne up in here. What's up, brother? Hey, what's good, brother? You okay? I'm doing well. How are you? Not too bad. I'm in work right now. What, uh, what do you do for work, brother? Um, I'm a salesman. I work for Oak Verge Land in the UK. Lovely. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me peep the swag. Let me peep the swag. Oh, hey, you dressed swag. up. Show me that suit. Full suit. Hey, brother, you're ready for work. You're ready, brother. Ready you're positioned. Work. Positioned for greatness. Exactly, bro. Always. Ask me, me uh, your question. How much are you making right now a month? <laughs> um... It really fluctuates, to be honest with you. It's probably between, well, like a bad month, maybe about 3,000, and then maybe up towards four, five. Love. On a very, Lovely. very month. Lovely. Yeah. So, so you're making about, you're ba making about 40, 40, 45,000 a year? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Lovely. In pounds. Perfect. Ask me your question, G. So my question for you is, I'm just wondering, because what holds me back is, Obviously, I listen to a lot of people like yourselves and whatnot. Um, and there's so many things out there that, you know, there's trading, there's investing in cryptos, there's, you know, so many different avenues to go down. Um, and there's obviously a lot of fake gurus as well. Um, what would you say the best route to get to 100K is? Well, the rest, I think, I think the best route is to find, you're in sales, right? So you, yeah. you're honing in on a craft. It's a great craft. I've made money in sales in the past. What you need to find right now is a place that has high traffic of leads, right? So maybe the sales job that you currently have may not be the best sales job that you may get, okay. right? So right now what you have is skill set. So is, is the job that you have foot traffic? Yeah, basically, you just store base, like people just Perfect. walk into the job. So Perfect. So show, so, so show, me the, show me the area around you. Let's see how much foot traffic you have. Turn it around. Show me what you got. Right now there's absolutely show me how many people there. no one So in. there's nobody. Perfect. Right. So, so that's a proof of my thesis right now. What you're doing is wasting time. 
You may be thinking that you're waiting that you're waiting for leads, yeah. but you're not waiting for leads. You're wasting time. So what you need to do is get home. I don't hope your boss is not listening, but fuck, no. fuck the job. <laughs> figure out, figure out how what you can do right now yeah. is how you can harness your skills that you've developed. Right, you have developed skills. Yeah. And figure out what you can do. The following is how can you have more foot traffic and get more leads so that you can do what two things get more commission yep. get more sales two, and what refine your skill okay remember we talked about iteration right so you need to iterate plan you need to plan what's my exit yeah what's my exit it's, it's quite difficult because obviously i do feel that way i've been like in this job like obviously it's up and down some days really really busy some days really quiet um in my area, like I live in like Sandidno in North Wales, there's like not many job opportunities. So I've been trying brother, to look, brother, do you know do you know how many like, online sales yeah, jobs there are, my friend? I was gonna say, yeah, I'm brother, looking for online brother, sales jobs. Brother, have you heard have you heard about getting in a car and moving? Yeah. I've only just you, passed my driving test actually. Brother, have you, yeah, have you heard of a bus? Yeah. Have you heard of have you heard of have you heard of a Ryanair? Yeah. My friend. My friend, there's a million reasons why to say no to something. There's only one reason to say yes. You're a free man and you're spending your and you're spending your young days under fluorescent lights. Yeah. You could be in Cancun right now or in Mexico or in Bali closing sales online, oh, my friend. Wish, what I you wish. need to do No no, you don't wish. Do it or don't do it. Okay. Don't wish. It's not a fucking birthday candle. <laughs> you understand my brother? Yeah. It's not a birthday candle, brother. <laughs> I understand. So, man. Hear me out. First plan you need to you need to calculate your exit plan okay. number two you need to execute on your exit plan okay that means you need to figure out an alternative if you're taking notes or anybody's taking notes understand this principle if you want to jump from job to another opportunity this is your principle everybody write this down okay never let go of one monkey bar until you secure the next do you know what a, a monkey bar is no when you used to you, when you used to be a kid those like those oh, like monkey bars in the in the, the monkey bar. bars yeah, yeah when yeah, you yeah. used to be a kid perfect yeah. so the principle is very simple never let go of one monkey bar until you secure the next so right now you have a monkey bar right you're holding on to a monkey bar which is your sales job yeah. secure the next monkey bar and then let go of the one that you have right now secure it so that you don't have the fear and then finally you iterate so what is iterate find a job that allows you to do what harness your skill develop your skill and yeah. you continue win yeah yeah, man, I definitely feel that. I mean, I've, I've done really well here to fail. I got, you know, I got awarded the um, top salesman of the year. Brother, the fuck the, I, I don't give a I'm fuck about the myself. awards. Brother, you showed me, brother, the only thing that I saw moving in, in, in that, in that, uh, <laughs> when you flipped the camera were tumbleweeds. <laughs> you understand my brother? Yeah, man. I'm just done, bro. Good. <laughs> bro, yeah. I, I, I wish you the best. Uh, we'll be in touch. When you're out of this job, let me know. And I promise you, on the other side of fear and anxiety and this wishful, dreadful thinking that you're not getting, brother, you're walking, you're in a suit and you're, it's empty, bro. It's empty. Imagine being in a fucking suit in a place where there's mad, mad traffic, where it's really nice. I, I feel it. Like I, I've you, been that's where you can position yourself. What, so you need to take action. You what, what do you think about commission only jobs? Great. 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 You need to earn, you need to, you need to eat what you okay. kill. Okay. I've always I've always done jobs where I can get paid on performance. You do not want to get paid on your time. You want to get paid for your ability to perform. Right. If you can develop the skill set of getting paid for providing value, it's a lot more interesting and beneficial than getting paid for your time. But right now you're wasting or you're not wasting time, we're chopping it up. Yeah. But position yourself to win and you can succeed. All right, bro. Sounds good, brother Wayne. Sounds great, man. Thank you for your time. Cheers. See you. Talk soon. All the best, bro. All righty. I saw a buddy of mine in here, and I kind of want to get him on. Let's see if he's on here. I wanted to introduce you guys to somebody. His name is Clinton. I don't know if he's in the house. Yo, Clinton, if you're if you're on here, hop on. I wanna uh, I wanna get you on. Send me a request. I want to introduce you guys to a good buddy of mine. I'm not sure if he's on here. I think he sent a message, but he's a, he's somebody I kind of want to get him on and talk to you guys about networking real quick. 
probably one of the best networkers in the world. Let me see. I got him right here. I just invited him. I'm going to light my cigar. I don't know if he's on here. If he's on here, I'll uh, get familiar. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother Clinton? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, man, I'm awesome. I hear, I'm over here hearing you give game. Isn't it funny that the stuff that you're saying to people like us is like such like it's so intuitive and it's such a no brainer. And it's so I don't understand how people don't understand like, <laughs> like, like how, how simple it really is to win and, and do the right thing that makes you happy and crush it at life. Hold on, let me just turn open my window and get some light in here. So, so, so brother, people are, people see a lot of plaques in the back. Give up because you're one of the best networkers I know, right? Thank you, you. you. You're connected like very few in the game. People lack the ability to network. Can you provide a, a piece of information, value to the almost three thousand people listening? How do people get into the room, brother? Well, before I give, before I elaborate, anybody that's here, you can get my book for free. That tells gives you all this game. Uh, the, the, and the link is in my bio. I wrote a book called How to Win Big uh, in the Music Business, but Luke will tell you, because Luke was a part of this whole process, uh, it's much bigger than just the music business. It's the principles and values of how to, how to build a network, how to build a great reputation, uh, how to connect with the right people, how to brand and market yourself, how to make a great first impression. So all of that stuff is elaborated on in my book. The link is in my bio, uh, or you can follow me. I give out daily game here on my page anyhow. But... Um, you know, you got to walk in the room like you're supposed to be there. Like, so the guy you were just talking to, right? And I'm not, I'm not being negative because it's awesome that he even asks you questions. And anyone asking questions, you should always feel great to ask people, smart people like Luke questions and never feel bad about it. You can never stop learning. Um, however, you could see like the timidness in like, in like what he should be doing. When you look at Luke talk, right? Luke talks with a lot of confidence, not because he's arrogant or cocky, it's because he's done enough research and work to realize what works and what doesn't work. So that confidence comes from the awareness and the ability of, no, this works because I've tested this. There are case studies. I've done research. So don't mistake somebody's confidence or arrogance when they have receipts to prove that they've been winning, repeat, winning, repeat, winning, repeat. You know what I mean? So like, you got to listen. You got to pay attention to the messenger, not the message, because any messenger can feed you full of shit lines or fake inspiration or regurgitate something they heard from somebody else. But like Mike Tyson once said, you know, everyone's got a great plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. And you know, when, when, when people, when people want to give you game, it's much different to hear somebody's path than to have your own path and to do the things that make you understand the emotional impact it may have on you. Cause we're all different emotionally. So I might be able to withstand a bunch of bullshit that you can't. You might get emotionally charged when someone's an asshole to you. So therefore, me and you getting to the top won't be the same, right? So you, I'm, not, I'm not a believer in because I made it, you can too, because we're all built different. So it doesn't mean you can make it because I made it or vice versa. So the, the, to, to answer your question, the piece of advice I would give to somebody that's trying to build a network is one, know what you're talking about. Two, don't over talk. Three, fucking have knowledge and intelligence and in what it is you're trying to talk about. And four, when you're in a room, don't be begging people or look like you're dying to get help from somebody and like you need them and, and you're not offering them anything in return, right? So you gotta be calm, you gotta be cool. That comes with having confidence, that comes with having intelligence and experience, <laughs> right? So you know all these things, Luke, but like, you know, you can't go in the room like, this is my one and only shot. I gotta just tell this guy a million different things that I do and hope that they think that I'm valuable because I've just said a million different things. When real in reality, you just made that person not even understand who the fuck you are because you just said a whole bunch of fucking shit. I can't even remember. I don't even know who you are. And it sounds like you don't know who you are either. Right? <laughs> you mentioned oftentimes this idea of, you know, people wanna make money, right? And it's this idea of of selling and most people don't know how to sell or what to sell but you talk about this principle of 
giving value and always giving the 51% to the customer, giving the 51% to the other person. And that's what allows for reciprocity and massive levels of success. Talk to me real quick, talk to the, the people listening. How do you establish a, a, a proper train of thought whereby in the short term you feel like you're losing, but in the long term you actually end up winning because you're here to provide value and you're not here to be a leash. Well, you said the magic word, feeling, right? So you have to understand the difference between what you're feeling and what the reality is. Uh, and a lot of times people let their feelings dictate uh, the way that they're gonna move or the way that they're gonna respond. If you can master the art of eliminating feelings, um, as it relates to getting emotionally upset or bothered, um, then you'll be able to stay on track to what it was you were saying earlier is making the plan, sticking to the plan and having you know goals to achieve that plan. When you are working very kind of uh, robotically like that, right? Where it's like, this is what needs to be done. Here's what it's got to do. Uh, you don't let your emotions ever, I I'll give an example. I think you've heard me use this example, Luke. If my goal, I'm on a football team and my goal is to run down the field and get into the end zone to score a touchdown for my team. And that's my goal. That's what I've been practicing all week for, to do that one thing, to get that goal of getting a touchdown so my team wins. Why, why would I let somebody in the stands who yells, fuck you, Clinton, drop the ball? Why? <laughs> why? Why would I ever let that person even penetrate my brain, let alone affect my emotions or cause any reaction from me when it wasn't part of my goal, right? So, and that's what a lot of people do. They worry about things that don't need to be worried about or that all they are is distracting you or blocking you from the main goal, right? So it's like if you're in the military and your goal is to get across enemy lines and blah, 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 blah. You ain't worried about someone's feelings you ain't worried about some bullshit somebody says. You're worried about your life. And guess what? Your goals is your life, right? So if you sit and make the proper goals for your life, then some other bullshit from somebody else's life, look, paying attention to your goals also means not giving a fuck about somebody else's because that's, that's, on, that's only gonna distract you from yours. So let them do what they're gonna do. Let them have their opinions about what they wanna think about. Let them think that you're doing it wrong. Because if you did enough research and it makes you happy, and you know this is the plan for you, then it doesn't matter what the fuck somebody else thinks or what they feel. Because they're not you and you're not them. And everybody doesn't have the same operating system. Most people don't seem to understand that your success is the insecurity of the unsuccessful yeah. and that when they perceive you all it is is a projection of what they weren't able to achieve and that as you climb the ladders of quote-unquote success as you get to the next level you cannot allow the naysayers and the people from the stands to dictate how you operate and it's many times this even imaginary belief that people actually care when you begin to realize nobody's even thinking about you that much besides those bullshit little comments on the internet. You said it You said it once and you wrote it in your book. You said, talking about selling because a lot of people need to make money. You said, when I sell to people, I sell them something that they need. If I don't sell them something that they need, I am a what? Oh, uh, yeah. You love this line. You brought this up I before. I love it, bro. Uh, I love it. Uh, so what I said was, and it's funny because I was with Pitbull and we were having a meeting in this hotel room and he said something like man clinton can sell fish to a water i mean water to a fish right and i was like and everyone's laughing and thinking you know most people look at that as almost like a compliment right and i didn't take it as a compliment because why would i need to sell water to a fish they have water already right so you know i i got very analytical about it i'm thinking like i don't want to be looked at as someone that can sell something easily to anybody I want to be able to sell what somebody needs and make, make them understand why they need it, right? So that is the skill that I've worked on my whole life that I've been able to get to at this point. But I believe that if 
if somebody can convince somebody to buy something or use something or sign up for something or be a part of something that's not something that they actually need in their life but you feel powerful because you were still able to convince them to buy it or do it that doesn't make you an amazing salesman it makes you a con man because you just sold somebody or convinced them to do something that they don't really fucking need and if you care that much about somebody you're gonna find out what is it that they need or what is it that i can provide or maybe what it is that i have to offer isn't for them right and you need to realize that it's not always about just making the sale it's about making the right sale it's yes. about connecting the right people to the right thing that makes the world a better fucking place yes brother thank you for the wisdom i appreciate you every time we connect it's great dude you're the man where are you right now singapore bro oh <laughs> i'm coming to uh philippines in two weeks in like two and a half weeks I know, I know it's different, but like, I'm over there. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'll be headed to Dubai tomorrow. I'm uh, working on uh, some stuff for Capital Club, but I'll be in LA in August. So if you're back around, uh, I'll swing by. We'll have a, we'll have a good time. Uh, dude, I'm excited. I'm, first, I want to just say to the people here that, that, you know, one, I'm super proud of you, uh, you know, what you've become and, you know, how hard you've worked. You know, I've known you for several years now, and I've watched when you were, you were always smart but you were trying to figure out the exact right thing to do with that smart, right? And, and I watched you figure it out. And I love that you're giving back and trying to help other people. And I love watching you talk because there's not many people I watch talk that, that I believe, you know what I mean? That I'm just like, all right, there's another person out here giving out fake inspiration. Like you're believable because you're honest and you're truthful. And like one of the things I will say, and I, don't, I hope you're not upset with me saying this in front of you is that, is that, you are also somebody that will own up to when they've made a mistake or they can improve on themselves. And that is the most inspiring and noble thing that anybody can do is self-assess and see like, you know what? I wasn't right last year. You know what I mean? And, and through my own self inventory, I realized that I was going down the wrong path. And now I've realized what the right path is. That's better for not only me, but the people that believe in me or that are near me. And I, it's really honorable that you've done that. I'm super proud of you, man. And you're my guy for life, dude. I, and by the way, thank you. I appreciate you me bringing you on here. I can see <laughs> I got a ton of followers. I saw, I saw the, I saw the get familiar. I was like, all right, I gotta get, get, get familiar up in town. Yeah, gotta, yeah, gotta yeah. get people familiar, bro. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> by, by the way, anybody on here, if you don't mind, if I can plug the book one more time, uh, if you go to the link in my bio, uh, you can get my book for free. Um, I have two more books coming out. Another one's coming out in August. Another one in September. Uh, and the whole, you know, Luke can tell you everything that I put out is one, I have the receipts. I have 20 plus years of, of, of winning. Uh, so it's not me just trying to like capitalize on people that are just trying to look for, uh, shortcuts to winning. I'm going to give it to you real. I'm going to be a matter of fact, and I'm going to help you do more great shit and less whack shit. Uh, cause that's what I've been doing my whole career. And Luke can tell you don't, that. So feel free to follow me. Feel Don't free to follow me. me. I give out daily game and the link to my free book is in, in my bio, man. Thanks for having me on, Luke. And uh, shout out to everybody in here. And hopefully I can come to one of the Capital Club uh, events. Yes, brother. <laughs> I'm going to have you out on the next one, bro. Appreciate you. All right, man. I'm still trying to get my teeth as white as yours. I'll see you All later. Right, bro. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Um, as you guys know, uh, my, my objective is to empower you guys to give you access to some of the most brilliant minds around the world. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to you, right? You need to act. You need to be able to sit down with all this information that you've learned. Don't let it just be another day, right? Don't let it just be another moment. At some point you have to act. At some point you have to realize that you have to take life and control it because you are the master of your own ship. You are the decision maker. I said it once and I'll say it again. Your relationship with God is like that of a crew member and a captain. Many times in life, we want to tell God, hey, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be in control. But God doesn't operate that way. You might be like, okay, that's cool. But I do not row. God doesn't row. God only steers. You have to put in the work. 
God does the impossible. But you, my friend, you have to do the rest. God does the impossible, but you have to do the rest. And when you humble yourself and you realize that in order to get to the top, you need to climb. You need to roll up your sleeves and get to work. So hopefully this was a valuable data set to you. Hopefully this was a good session. Went a little bit longer than I expected, over an hour. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed spending some time with you guys. So all the love, all the power. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. Luke Belmar, out.